Hi guys, I've drawn up a 200mm shaft with a diameter of 25mm. Right, let's apply stress analysis, simulation, stress analysis, manage, create study. These are all left click. And uh, let's say OK. Don't touch anything on that board. The next thing, next to the manage, we will go to material, assign the material. We'll go for mild steel. Again, I've mentioned that the yield strength for mild steel is 210 megapascals. OK. We've got the material, we know it's mild steel. Assigning a color to it does not give you the type of material. If I click lead here, that has nothing to do with the material that is used inside the actual simulation. It says original, uh, original material lead. The override material that, you, that you're really going to use is mild steel. That's what we want and the yield strength of mild steel is going to be used. Okay, because you can choose anything here. You know, you can choose uh, a thermoplastic resin, titanium. Uh, you can stick with this material. That's fine. But however, it's better to make sure you choose the material that you really want for the project in the end. Because this just gives you a nice color for your project. And it can also be used in here. But if you want to use mild steel and you want to keep this nice color, the shiny color then you're going to need to override it. So we've got mild steel that we're going to work with. And I'm going to say, okay, the next thing next to it, uh, that's called preparation. That's for thin bodies, uh, for shells in that. Uh, let's go to constraints. The pin constraint, you can see that forward and backward movement for a round object is restricted. Fixed constraint, it shows you there that the face is restricted forward and backwards. And then we go to fix that that uh, actually fixes the whole shaft to be able to move forward and back. It's actually a combination of both. So I'm clicking on the face there so the whole shaft is restricted from moving forward, backward, up or down. And I'm going to say apply. Okay, in all three axes, it can't move up, it can't move down, it can't move that way, it can't move this way, it can't move this way, it can't move that way. So X, Y and Z. So we've done that. One, two, three. We've done it. Let's go for our load. You can, of course, put more than one constraint in if it's needed. But in this case, we're just going to look at one constraint because we're still looking at an overhanging shaft. Remember, this can come out of a gearbox or any place where you have a shaft coming through the bearing at the end where you attach a pulley or whatever you're going to attach to it. Now, let's say, for instance, we're going to have a, a pulley on, in the middle of the shaft. And I'm going to click on Force going to give this a force of 500 newtons let's say 5000 and I'm going to click in the center so the pulley will act exactly there in the center it will be changing the force where does this force come from from the belt tensions from the addition of the belt tensions it can be gears and with gears it can be the radial force and the tangential force will be what well, the torque and the radial force of the gear will be this force. For belts, it will be T1 plus T2. Okay, so that's what we have. There. Uh, the same with chains as well. We're going to say apply. And that's it. And now, let's say, for instance, coming through, uh, connected to this, uh, coming out of the gearbox, is a motor applied at the other side of the gearbox. And this shaft is experiencing torque coming out from the gearbox. So to, in, to put the torque there, you're going to need to go to loads and click on moment. Now these are the two forces that I want you guys to work with. Remote force will only move this force in any direction, in this direction. But I've already assumed the pulley is in the center. And the remote force will go in this direction or that direction at any distance. So we've done the, the center selection. So let's go for a torque. You click on moment. And let's say the torque this thing needs to be able to handle is about 500 Newton meters. But please pay attention. Look at the unit there. It's in millimeters. You need to take it to meter. And let's say space N space M. There it is. It's acceptable. It, it still goes into that direction. So I'm going to apply this. Let's rotate the shaft. Let's say a uh, moment. Click the front face and there's the torque. 
let's go type in our 500 500 space n space m and apply so what do we have here a fixed shaft with a force that's trying to bend the shaft and a torque that is applied through the system and this is what you find in general in shafts you have combined torque and bending moment that's what you find in general in some cases with expansion of the shaft when you have uh, bearings that restricts your, your shaft from expanding into one direction you can include an axial load but however this is what you'll get in most cases to be able to allow the shaft to expand your bearing will be uh, the free end you'll use the free end for the bearing to expand uh, for the shaft to expand properly in in the direction so that you have no resistive loads okay now this is what we have focus on this forget about everything that I've said I want you to focus on this problem right the next thing is to go look at your mesh just look at the mesh and this is what it looks like like I've said it's these are lots of nodes that uh, it's each has its own stress and you'll see once we simulate that these nodes will all get different colors as it goes down the material and the color grading will show the stresses that's acting on the material so I'm going to click simulate now simulate and click run let's look at our stresses now I'm so happy if you can look at these stress look at the stress 310 megapascals we got for our von Mises Let's go to our first principal stress. We've got 193. And our third, we've got 208, 204. That's our maximum. Now, okay, displacement, we know this thing is going to displace. Look at it, 0 0.4, 0 0.38 millimeters of displacement. And uh, if you're going to have a lot of displacement, uh, I, I don't want to go into design here, but anyway, that's your displacement. Let's go to factor of safety. Just look at this. The maximum factor of safety is 5.72. That doesn't mean the thing is safe with that factor of safety. The minimum factor of safety is your allowable factor of safety, which means that's the highest value of your factor of safety usable for the shaft. Okay, so it's a fail, you can see. We don't even have one as a factor of safety. Why is that? Because, uh, let me just try to get into the calculator here. Let's go to the von Mises stress. We've got 310.2. We have the stress that the material offers, which is 207. And then we have the actual stress acting on the material, which is 310.2 megapascal. Now, let's equal that. I want you to look at that factor of safety, 0, 0.67667. It's a fail. It's a total fail. Let's go to the factor of safety there. There it is. That's my factor of safety. So uh, what do you do in this case? As a design technician or a technologist or an engineer, you will now need to go and find either, remember your equation says, stress is equal to force over area. The stress that a material offers is in inadequate. You can either go and choose a material with the highest stress let's say for instance we can go override the material and say right we're going to choose titanium there's titanium okay uh, will it be able to handle that let's go and simulate with titanium i i'm, I'm just going to show you guys but please bear in mind is this cost effective do you really need titanium for this type of design let's say okay right click on results Click on simulate again and run. Stresses is basically the same. Should be. And let's go to the factor of safety. The factor of safety is a 0 0.89 minimum. There's different grades of titanium. Grade 2, uh, grade 5. You get different types of, uh, types of titanium. So you can also see it's a fail there. Okay. It's a fail there. So basically you can go from one material to the next, uh, looking at your material sheet to look for a higher uh, stress than that. To be able to get to a factor of safety of about 2.5, you'll need about 750 or 780 megapascals. And that's what you cannot afford. 
So why not? Let's go back to our mild steel. This is just for lecturing purposes. Let's go and stick with mild steel. And say, okay, now watch this. Let's go change the area. We can either alter the force because stress is equal to force over area. We looked at the stress side. It's going to cost a whole lot of money to use another type of material. How about just changing the area? The force remains the same. The torque we can't change that comes through the gearbox. And the, uh, the place where the pulley sits, that we can also not change unless we take it a little bit closer. Right? Uh, then we can change the bending here which will give you a little bit of less stress. But I don't want you guys to focus on all this. Leave the loads as is. Let's go look at our area there. I would say let's go to about 40 millimeters in diameter of shaft. Right click finish. It's very easy. Go to results, right click simulate. Run. We got 73.9 uh, Megapascal, we're going to have about 2.5 as a factor of safety. Uh, there we go, 2.8. I'm happy with it, which means the design is 2.8 times safer. Okay, it can handle the loads uh, with 180% more than what you really needed. So there we go, we are happy with that. And now you're going to generate your report. You can go play around and animate a little bit and say, okay, let me see what happens here. What's the bending? We don't see any real bending there through our animation. See there? That's the, 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 the shaft actually through the centrifugal force as well, showing expansion. expansion uh, showing expansion. But uh, that doesn't really matter. Okay. This is where we have our minimum stress. Our maximum stress is all around the circumference. That's less stress. In the center, there's, there's less stress. Okay, now we're going to generate the report. Click on report. Make sure if we go to settings, you're not going to generate all these. Okay, like I've showed, shown you in the previous exercise, you're only going to generate certain things and not everything. Okay, we're only interested in these five parameters. So click on report and say, let's say studies. Once you've clicked on report, uh, let your loads. Constraints, results. I don't want all these results here at the bottom. These bottom four, uh, we're not going to worry about it. And these top two, we're only looking for these five. One, two, three, four, five, or else your report will be too long. Click OK. Beautiful. Okay, these are all your parameters, your moments that you've applied, your forces. And I will go and I'll be able to see that your force that you apply there. Okay, and that's your torque. Your torque is 500 Newton. The shear modulus, that's all the material properties. And there you can see the yield strength is 207. And uh, this is like a summary that you see of the whole thing. Your torque is 500,000 Newton millimeter, but it's 500 Newton meter. Right there, there's everything applied. I can see it. So as you go along, you'll be able to see, okay, this student that has been successful there, he's got an effect of safety of 2.8. I want you guys to get from 2.5 to 3.5. This is an exercise. Things might vary in industry, dependent on the industry where you, where you work and what your experience of the product that you've designed out there in industry. If there's problems, you're going to need to do some changes in there to get the customer satisfied. But anyway, this is stress analysis to be able to understand the tool effectively. So let's carry on. These are your stresses for mices. That's the max there. And uh, as you go along, you can see this is all you have. But this is my little table that I'm interested in. And of course, your torque and your forces where it's located and then your constraint. And uh, your diameter as well. Once that doesn't work out, remember, you can now save this report. Please make sure you save this report. And once you saved it, I want you to go and regenerate. So basically, you'll generate the first report, and then you'll, you'll play around with the diameter till you get the required uh, factor of safety. Remember, you will get a different factor of safety than somebody else, because you will play with your own diameter. Okay, and that's basically it. So once you've done that and you've saved your report, 
uh, every time when you generate, please make sure you put a new right, in the first time we have used an axial load and now we've done bending and now we've done torsion together. You can have any one of these alone or as a combination. Depends what I'm going to give to you in the exercise. It might be all three. Maybe it's compression. It might be bending. And obviously the, the diameters might vary. There might be two diameters that you need to play, play around with. And obvious the and obvious the diameters might vary. There might be two diameters that you need to alter to be able to get the proper answer. Thank you very much. This was part three or four, and the last one will be done straight after this.